We need a revolution in education. But more than anything, we've got this culture, this culture of low expectations, where some of our schools, some of our teachers act like these babies can't learn. And I'm here to tell you right now that we need to end that culture of low expectations and we need to send a clarion call out there that we're not going to put up with it anymore. People in the suburbs say our schools are great. But they're not. That's the thing. And the test scores show that. Some Education reformer Kevin Chavis says American schools on the whole just aren't that good. And America isn't going to buy that. America's not going to buy America's that. America's been buying. Because America doesn't know what it doesn't know. At the time this system was put in place, there were no cars, there were no planes, there were no computers, there was no electric lights. I, I give this, this as a point of reference because the current system that we, many of us celebrate and many of us come from, has virtually been unchanged over the past 150 years. And the end result is that it is not working for all children. We have schools now and school districts that operate at 20% proficiency. That means that 80% of the kids are failing. McKinsey and Company, just this spring, this past April, released a first of its kind landmark report on the economic consequences and impact of the achievement gap in America. The result of the achievement gap ed in education in this country has amounted to an economic recession, a permanent economic recession larger than the recession we're currently experiencing. They also said that the international impact has made us non-competitive from an economic point of view. Many countries have focused on the fact that they have to tailor their approach to the best interests of children as opposed to forcing children into a system that may not work for them. And that's why these other countries are outpacing us. This one-size-fits-all approach to education service delivery has failed our nation. To me, it's not a big policy debate as much as it is doing all we can by any means necessary to educate a child. Our future really does lie in how we handle and treat our young and how we educate them. And anything short of that is shameful on us. Choice to me is the only way, I believe, that we can force the system from an external vantage point to change itself. It, it will never change itself from within. Public education will never change. But all the reforms. These are well intended people who want to help kids. All the well intended designs and programs du jour, unless there is some competition infused in the equation, unless that occurs, then, then they know they have a captive monopoly that they can continue to dominate. We've got to empower parents to know what the options are and then provide those options for them. This idea of forcing everyone to put the same widget in the same box on the same assembly line in the same way, it just doesn't work. It's a secret weapon that lets me know we can win this fight. And that's the resiliency of our children. Because they have an indomitable spirit that transcends even the adult wars. It is time for us to nurture that spirit and put our children first. We need to make sure that we create environments for our children to learn irrespective of where those environments exist. And the essence of our democracy is dependent on us doing that. Today we are sending a message. Dr. King once said that a man can't ride your back if you stand straight. Today we are standing for the children in the District of Columbia. If we can eliminate the sense of impossibility and helplessness from the lives of these children, we will change the world.